It's just a matter of being aware of what these uh, ships are doing, or this the Corsican Collective is doing. Because they can attack me at any time if I give them enough incentive. Medium Radiant, Ancient Androids, which I think, yeah, it gives... Scans have revealed a cache of ancient androids locked away in a bunker on this planet. Who put these here and why? We couldn't say. We couldn't say. Gain two android citizens when colonizing this planet. Ooh, this looks promising though. It is a small world, but it's an ultra rich system, so that has a lot of potential if I can get to it and colonize there later on. But it is going to be in the front lines for any inevitable. Uh, confrontation because I don't feel like I'm gonna get to be friends with the court scene collective I just got that feeling considering I kind of I uh, don't want to do any trade with them at all so that might be part of the reason just saying so we're gonna go back to our si two science there get that back underway as we produce everything else Hell, do I even want to uh, throw extra population over in these other systems to kind of develop their growth? Because Wardan would be good. It would help. Uh, would help gain the population going at least, and that will require one freighter to move. So we're in good shape. And no system. No, none of my. Uh, Systems or colonies are at any risk of starvation with the uh, freighters maxed out. And here's our next uh, introduction. I am High Lord Octavia of House Vartel, leader of the Draylock Council. We welcome you to the stars and look forward to the dealings we will have. So that's the deceptive and un untrustworthy Draylock, and you can kind of see why. I think the picture says it all. So they are weary. Weary races are afraid of being taken advantage of by more kind alien races. They have minus 25 to their tolerance level, which is, which is basically how much you can get out of them, as far as trading goes. Which is right now at 25 down below. Tolerance levels when dealing with other races. Oh wait, let me just say it again. They they have minus twenty five to their tolerance levels when dealing with her races. So yeah. So if I were to ask them for a trade, there actually is for me. Their tolerance would be pretty is fifteen there. So that's basically what it is, and I can only offer get so much out of them before that caps out. They're versatile, so. Mercantile races love commerce. As a result, they value trade right trees at 50% of their normal value. So that's how I can get more value out of them with trade, doing trades. And they all, and they have only half the normal tolerance in pack. So that's pretty much that. That'll they are cunning, so they will likely create spies and, of course, hard negotiators. So I can offer them trade. And I could get ion beams as a result, especially if I'm gonna. Actually, that works out nicely, I think. Especially if I'm going. It's not enough, though, sadly. Because I need 35% more, it seems. So maybe I can offer a tiny bit more. How much do I can I get away with? I need like 24. So if I want to get the ion beams for my fighters. Which is basically just upgrade weaponry, so that's my strategy. I'm gonna go try and get some decent fighters, especially getting that tech off them. So I get the charge ion beam. So I get me some ion beams to use for the fighters when I eventually get them after a soul armor, so. And there's their territory right there. So both the system, both their territories is a little bit bigger than mine, but mine's more concentrated, so it's not as vulnerable, at least. And there's a nice rich asteroid belt for me. Not a large population though. So my options are pretty limited right now, seeing as I'm 
going to be contesting with both these factions pretty soon. I think the Coruscant Collective are, are most what's in my way though, so I need to prepare for them. And I think I'm on the good side of the Draylocks now with that successful trade, at least a little bit. Ooh! What is this? We have ourselves a random event. Winter Sports Resort on Warden 1. The Tundra Planet Warden Warden 1 in the Warden system has become a popular destination for thrill-seeking winter sports enthusiasts throughout the galaxy. A massive winter sports industry has sprung up around the demand, the crowning jewel of which is the newly opened Warden 1 Winter Sports Resort. By attracting tourists from far and wide, this Tundra planet now produces 2 billion credits per turn and the benefits of fiber approval. So, just for having the system, I got me a nice bonus there. So I'm actually getting a good surplus of money now. So that is working out well. I think my next citizen when I get it on here is gonna I'm gonna use for science, I think. Everything here looks pretty well what I want. And how's Soul One doing on population? 34 turns, so it's still gonna be a little bit. And we got ourselves our solar armor. So on to our next research, which of course, as I already mentioned, is going to be the fighter bays. Because plastic steel armor, which is also a ship armor, is basically going to be is pretty much the same, similar to what my solar armor is going to do. So I'm going to have conflicting interest if I were to research both those armors there. But now that we're in good shape, I think I need to start preparing to get a couple of ships to defend myself. And GNN is back with another episode of Racial Profiling. You can't stop the signal and we won't stop broadcasting. So enjoy this pleasant profile of the Enigmatic Cordesine Collective. We already know these guys. The Cordesine Collective. Here's one we don't see too often. These guys are giant monocolier mollusk things who have mind control the race they, they call the Alox. Alwa. Alwax? Oh god, that's a tongue twister for me, it sounds like. To do their buildings. Slavery has always been a strong strategy in the great game, so we reached out to the Cordial Scene for their take on the galaxy. Okay, how's my shell polish look? Good? Okay, I'm ready. Oh, this is so exciting. Yep, turn it on. Mm hmm. Hello, GNN. We're f yes, we're very happy to be on the show. Um, I could even be a regular contributor if you wanted. I have lots of great things to tell you about myself. And we actually had to edit the response down because it was more than an hour long and almost entirely about how great they are. Well, like I said, celebrity drama queen. Don't let the looks just fool you now. And that is it for now. Until next time, this has been GNN. Uh, trying to think of some witty line there, but I failed. What can I say? It is going to take a little bit of getting used to. To get a little more comfortable in the game. And of course, be able to express myself a little bit more. We're gonna get through this. And I got myself my two aggressor ships, so I should be reasonably def protected. Because as soon as I see any pirate ships, I can easily move my second one over to intercept. At least that's the idea. Since we're well on our way to being besties, I think it's only appropriate that we have a trade treaty. Of course, the trade treaty again is gonna require me to give them more than I want to do, so I'm gonna have to, I am definitely gonna make an enemy of them at some point because the relationship's going down a little bit and what what is the relationship with them? effect on tolerance trade relations, so yeah so I'll have to see about getting on the good side for a bit I might want to do some more training once, once uh, the old trade finishes up. Yeah, at least it'll keep them off my back as long as I keep that going. So we're, we're about to enter back in the Draylock territory. Let's see what system we have here. Large ocean. That sounds promising. Poor resources though. And god I do not want to look at it but let's have a look at it anyway. It has the trait Sharknados. 
I think you and I both know what that's a reference to. Especially after that uh, sci-fi sci movie. Regular Sharknados in peril, in peril the health and safety of citizens living on this planet, lowering base growth by 50%. However, the sharks are edible and easy to harvest once the Sharknados strand them on land, providing a plus two flat food bonus to the planet. So, the population got, uh, yeah, the population growth went down quite significantly because of the Sharknados. But it's a large world, it even has spice there, which will... It's not the spice that we know of, which is interesting, because it increases ship damage for each stack of it you have. So it's a bit of a different thing than you would expect with the spice. So it's almost... It's not even quite like Dune. The world Dune with its spice. The spice must flow. In this case, I don't really care too much about that. It's the research I would like, or even several stacks of it would be pretty handy as well. So fighter bays are underway, it'll take a couple turns to research that. 20 turns about, so it'll still be a bit. Then I'll have to get ready to make my carrier ships to kind of complement it. The fleet ran out of fuel, okay, I completely neglected that poor ship's out of fuel, so... I pretty much explore as much as I can, to be honest, until I can get more ex further expands, or get a larger territory even. Even some kind of station here, refueling station, would kind of be necessary, because not much further I can go. And there's nothing but dead space around. But I can take a look at that anomaly. And I have research labs going. Seed of mine's almost done. We propose a bargain between our people. We are interested in solar armor. So, they want solar armor, but how the hell am I going to get value out of that? Because I can't trade research with them. And of course, trade rates are going to be too a little bit much. And of course, what is it? They like... Yeah, they love comrades. So they, they, it, the bonus is only on trade treaties. So can I get some credits off them? Maybe I can get a fair amount of credits to kind of accelerate my growth to make up for the solar armor. 176 credits, because I'm not gonna get any. The only thing I hate is I can't check what this, uh... Yeah, I can't really see what the protofill cache is. I think I have two of those already. So that might be useful for later on down the road if I can get one more. So, that's as far as I get. And am I willing to give them solar armor? What tech do you, They just have defensive flares, so... If I can get my more connections with other factions, then I can come out ahead. If, since I can trade with the other systems to kind of balance out the fact that I'm, they're kind of gaining more value in the trades. So I need to reach out a little more. So once I refuel that scout, I'm going to have to take a wide look over on the the bottom left here. Or bottom right. Jesus, is what am I saying? I'm getting all mixed up already. So air parks farm is done. So that is going. Try and get the production going on this base. As well as get this start on. Do I want. What is it? A research lab? Do I want to do that? How close am I? Yeah, I'm pretty close to getting new new population there, so. My next. Ne next civilian is going to pretty much be put on the science for a time, so that's going to accelerate that. The research lab's already underway. And then I need to start building my ships once the fighter bays finish up, I think. Start giving me a fleet to push out. And we got two ships here. I think that's a fighter and that's a frigate. Yep, that looks like it might be a frigate. No, that's the frigate. I'm completely wrong. And that one's armed with missiles. Large missiles and lots of ammo, so that's long range, and that is just a point defense ship. Lots of missiles, though, so I need. 
Uh, there's something I need to keep in mind. So these defensive flares, which are as you would expect with flares, are good at a good defense against uh, missiles. So that that and some smaller fighters intercept missiles is what I think I need to aim for. The benefit, of course, is I'm already doing that. I got my fighter bays going. They should be pretty handy at defending my capital ships if they can intercept those uh, missiles. We will have to see. I have not seen any of the more pirates coming by, so... It looks like there's some wreckage of some kind there too, so... I'm gonna have to deal with that first. So I don't get backstabbed by some raiding pirates. Other than that, not too much else I can do just yet. Ooh, Manifest Destiny. This is like a, a quest of sorts. Our people have of late been feeling a strong sense of Manifest Destiny. The feelings that the stars are ours for the taking and that indeed the future of our species depend upon securing a stellar empire that spans fast and wide, far and wide. To that end, a cadre of wealthy investors have offered to pay 500 billion credits into our imperial treasury if we expand our tutorial holdings into a minimum of three different solar systems. If we could do this within 25 turns, then the payout is ours. And BB, BBN is back. Did you miss us? We sure missed you. In today's episode of Racial Profiling, we are turning our attention to the curious Volvar Imperium. Basically dogs. Or wolves. Or werewolves. Take your pick. The Volvar Imperium. Who are these genocidal space wolf bat things? And what do they want from our galaxy? We reached out to their leaders to help us understand. Quote... The Fulvar Imperium does not suffer interviews with foolish robots. We should kill and devour you for even asking. And there you have it, folks. Wisdom from the mouths of wolves. We'll see you next time on GNN. So that is what? Four of the different races so far. Now, of course, the Volvar, I gotta be very weary of them once I run into them. Because they are gonna be a threat. They are very aggressive, very dangerous, and they are, they love to have lots of territory because they can, their population grows very quickly. So research labs almost done. Ooh, we broke the bargain between our people. They want my research lab. And I can get defensive flares from them. I don't think I want to do the trade now, though. I kind of want to start trading with other factions, to be honest. Because I want to have the take advantage of the trade rights, to be honest, to get more value from them. So I'm going to reject for now. That will hurt. Ooh, and as I speak of them, we get ourselves another pirate ship. This time we get a raider and a carrier. Corsair carrier. So it's time to respond. The aggressor time to get back over here. And our fighter base complete just in time. Although, I with that mission in place, I do think I want to get a colony ship going. It'll take 21 turns and I have enough credits to actually build up build it quicker. I have incentive to basically build it. Where can I put it though? Because I have nowhere I can put it. Unless I can get it way over here. Because that has population size and I have the freighters to support it. It's going to cost a bit of maintenance. I'm a bit in an awkward spot. There's probably, there's like no way I can actually get that mission done. How long it will it take for even my exploration frigate to get there? This will tell if I can do it in time. That will take 13 turns, and I think 4 turns may have already gone. So I need to get my colony ship in like 10 turns or something. I don't know if that's possible or not. So I'm going to have to accelerate the process a little bit. 
So that will take 14 turns to do, and then I can buy it early. So that should do it. And then I want, like I said earlier, defensive flares to help as a defensive measure against those missiles. Because I'm already playing my, uh, mo I'm gonna have to prepare to deal with the Corsi Collective. They are bottled me in, and I don't take that kindly. 